Hi, third grade. We're going to get started with our religion. I'm going to read this with you. So if you would open your books to page 204 and 205, remember we've been talking about the four marks of the church. We are one, holy, catholic, apostolic. And so when we say we are one, that means we are united. So on page 204, at the top it says, united as one. And we'll take some time to look at the pictures and read everything else. But let's get started with, how is the Catholic Church one? Church communities are sometimes different, but all are one in Jesus. In other cultures, you would see some differences in the Mass celebration than what you would see in your own parish. The same mystery of faith is being celebrated in all these places. The main parts of the Mass are the same everywhere because the Catholic Church is united as one. So let's take a look at these pictures now. And they've got a map behind them because they're showing all the different places in the world where the Catholic faith is practiced. And let's start on the left where we see some musicians. We see some people playing instruments and singing. It says, in many other countries, the language and music of the liturgy are different. So if you were in Germany, the words would be in German. If you were in Italy, the Mass would be said in Italian. If you're in Mexico, you're probably going to hear the Mass said in Spanish. And at Immaculata, you can sometimes hear the Mass said in Spanish. And then we see <clears throat> the next circle. And I see the woman is wearing the white with the blue. And I remember Mother Teresa used to wear that. She is a saint now. But she, she didn't live that long ago. She um, died probably, oh, I don't know, it might be 15 or 15 years ago or so. But she served the people of India. And they also sent missions to Africa. So in countries in Africa, children might dance in the aisle in procession to the rhythm of drums before receiving communion. That sounds like a really interesting celebration. Now we go over to the last page. In India, a deacon might honor the book of Gospels by passing a tray of fragrant flowers over it. And a deacon is someone who is not yet a priest, and he might become a priest, and maybe he will never become a priest. A deacon is somebody who is studied parts of ordination, and they might be on their way to the priesthood, or they could be a married person, a married man who wants to serve the church and be a special help to the priests. So let's look at the top of page 205, identifying characteristics. And you keep hearing this. There are four marks of the church. One, holy, Catholic, and apostolic. These marks are linked together and show the essential, the important features of the church and her mission. The church is one because the Holy Spirit unites members of the church all over the world through one faith and one baptism. So as Christians, we are all baptized in Christ. Let's take a look at some of these words that we're going to be coming across as we continue our reading. Okay. The first one, marks of the church. We already know it. One, holy, Catholic, and apostolic. They are the four characteristics that identify our church. One, the church is one because the power, the Holy Spirit, unites all the members through one faith and one baptism. Holy, the church is holy because she is set apart for God and God's purposes. We are here to do God's work. Catholic, and did you notice it's a lowercase c? In this case, 
It means the church is meant for all people in all times and all places. It's universal and apostolic. And we see the word apostle in there. The teaching authority of the church comes directly from Jesus and his chosen apostles because the bishops of the church are direct successors of the apostles. That means the bishops today are directly in line with the apostles from long ago. So an activity at the bottom. Think. How do you think Mass is celebrated in different parts of the world? Probably different ways of getting dressed for Mass. Some Masses, they have dance, liturgical dance. Some have a lot of music. Some might not have any music. The Masses will be said in different languages. Using a map or a globe, choose a country and then research how people celebrate Mass in that country. I'm not going to assign that, but if you're interested, it could be something really neat to do. If we were in school, we would probably do one of these together. Okay, I'm going to end with that, and tomorrow we'll read about holy. So we're one and holy. I'm going to go ahead now and read from Amelia Bedelia. So, Amelia Bedelia and her family were invited to go to the mayor's cabin on, what was it, Large, Large Fish Lake or something like that? Large, Lake Largemouth. There's a fish called a largemouth, largemouth bass. I don't know. Maybe that's the kind of fish that live in that lake. So, have you ever heard somebody say that, oh, that's just a fish story? Well, that means that it might be an exaggeration, like what we talked about in social studies. Because sometimes people would come back from a fishing trip and, and they'd say, well, how was fishing? And they'd talk about, oh, I caught this fish. It was this big. And then the next person that they talk to, they're like, it was this big. And the fish keeps getting bigger and bigger. They keep exaggerating it more and more. Oh, I caught it, but it got away. It was this big. It was this big. It was this big. It was this big. So a fish story, when you hear that, that means it's an exaggeration. Largemouth, Lake Largemouth was not close, but it sounded like so much fun that the miles seemed to melt away. Amelia Bedelia found the lake on the map. It had tiny symbols of a fish and a boat on it. Hey, she said, these pictures mean that we can go boating and fishing. That fish is as big as the boat. Maybe my fortune could come true. When I was your age, said her father, I caught a really big fish. He took one hand off the steering wheel and held it out to show the size. Amelia Bedelia's mother shook her head. When I met your father, that fish was half that size. It's grown bigger every time he talks about it. He's exaggerating. Amelia Bedelia's mother had tried to go fishing once too, but she couldn't bear to kill a poor worm just to catch a fish. That made no sense to Amelia Bedelia. Amelia Bedelia's mom and dad started telling funny stories about their summer vacations when they were growing up. Before Amelia Bedelia knew it, they had arrived. Hey, Dad, yelled Amelia Bedelia, was the fish you caught that big? Her parents' mouths dropped open in awe. Dead ahead was a largemouth bass as big as a semi-trailer. It was made of concrete and painted to look like a real fish with scales and everything. It could have swallowed their car. Now there's a town in Minnesota when I would go to drive to see my mom and they had a big fish like that and inside it was a restaurant. 
Wow, said Amelia Bedelia's mom. That's how big your dad's fish will be if he keeps telling that story. That means he's just going to keep exaggerating. Ha ha, said Amelia Bedelia's father. He wasn't really laughing, but he sure was smiling. He parked next to a grocery store. Let's go buy some staples, he said. Staples, wondered Amelia Bedelia. Why did they need staples on a vacation? Had he packed the stapler to do his paperwork? This was a general store, cozy and chock full of interesting stuff. Amelia Bedelia walked across the creaky wooden floor to pick out postcards while her parents shopped. When it was time to pay, she asked, where are the staples? Right here, said her father, waving his hand over the eggs, bread, milk, butter, coffee, tea, and sugar. Amelia Bedelia hoped that her father could relax so he wouldn't mistake food for office supplies. Now, boys and girls, staples mean things that you need in your cupboard all the time that you use often. So in our diet, we have staples in our diet, fruits, vegetables, meat, bread, milk. They're like the basic things that we need. While her parents enjoyed a cup of coffee, Amelia Bedelia sat in a big rocker on the store's porch and wrote to her friends. She wrote to Suzanne. Hi, Suzanne. Check out the shape of this lake. Look familiar? Turn this card upside down. Lots of hugs, Amelia Bedelia. So here's the front of the postcard. And she said, does it look familiar? And then she said, turn it upside down. Hey, you know what it sort of looks like? Sort of looks like a boot. The heel and the toe. And what country was that that looked like a boot? And Amelia Bedelia thought they were going to go there. Rome is in Italy. That's funny that the lake sort of looks like an upside down Italy shape. Chapter 7. A good, no, a great sport. They crossed it out, changed their mind. It was love at first sight. Amelia Bedelia thought the cabin was possibly the cutest cabin in the whole world. It was by the water, so they got a view of the lake from the breakfast room and both bedrooms upstairs. As they were putting the staples away, there was a knock at the door. Howdy, neighbor, came a deep, friendly voice. I've been expecting you. Stan Pilton's my name, but everyone calls me Doc. Amelia Bedelia's parents introduced themselves and Amelia. I am glad to meet you, young lady, said Doc. My granddaughter, Audrey, is visiting us. She may be a bit older than you are, but I'm sure you two will get along. She's a good sport. Which one, asked Amelia Bedelia. Soccer? Basketball? Doc laughed. <laughs> Actually, it's fishing, he said. I need to learn how to fish, said Amelia Bedelia. I bet Audrey would be happy to teach you, said Doc. You just missed her, though. She's out in the boat. In fact, she's fishing right around that bend. He pointed to where the shore of the lake curved around. How about we take the mayor's boat for a spin, said Amelia Bedelia's father. We can go say hello. Great idea, said Doc. Come with me and I'll show you the ropes. Thanks, but I grew up around boats, said Amelia Bedelia's father. But I'd appreciate the help. Amelia Bedelia is confused. Show him the ropes. That means show you how to do it. And her father says, that's okay. I've been around boats for a long time. I know how. They all went down to their dock and climbed aboard the speedboat tied up there. Everyone put on life jackets. 
Amelia Bedelia's father got behind the wheel and started the engine. Doc warned them about a big stump that was submerged underwater, about 50 yards off the dock. Can't always see it, he said. Be careful. It snapped the propeller off a boat last summer. So this area wasn't always covered by water. There were trees growing there. But now it's covered by water in a lake. And so the tree has died, but there's still a stump and it's underwater and you don't want to hit it with your boat. Thanks for the heads up, said Amelia Bedelia's father. As Doc cast them off, he hollered over the roar of the engine. Amelia Bedelia, find Audrey. You can try something new and get your feet wet. Excuse me, said Amelia Bedelia. Why would Doc want her to get her feet wet? That just means experience it yourself to get your feet wet. Try it out. Doc's reply was lost in the roar of the motor, and Amelia Bedelia forgot all about wet feet as her dad steered carefully around the big stump. As she looked down into the clear water, she could see the stump. Wait, she thought. Had something big moved down there? Or were her eyes playing tricks on her, just like her ears? Soon her dad was speeding across Lake Largemouth. Amelia Bedelia liked the cushions on the seats and the shiny brass instruments on the dashboard. No boats work like cars. Excuse me, I read that wrong. Do boats work like cars? She asked. Of course not, said her father. We're on the water. That's good, said Amelia Bedelia, because this boat has one of those little windows with an arrow pointing at the letter E, just like our car did. Uh-oh. What does that mean? Amelia Bedelia's parents looked at the gas gauge, then at each other. Their eyes practically popped out of their heads. Not again, they yelled together. Steer closer to land, advised Amelia Bedelia's mother. If we run out of gas, we can swim for it. Aye, aye, Captain, said her father. He turned hard, swooping as close to shore as he could without running aground. That means he didn't want to touch the bottom of the lake, like where the dirt is. It could ruin the motor. The engine made a sputtering, coughing, wheezing sound, and then silence. What boat did you grow up around? The Titanic? asked Amelia Bedelia's mom. Too bad you didn't grow up around a gas pump, too. Now what are we going to do? Fear not, said Amelia Bedelia's father, picking up a boat hook with a long wooden shaft. It's a shallow enough to use this pole to push us around that spit of land. Maybe we'll find someone with gas to spare. Amelia Bedelia's mother moved to the stern to stay out of his way as he began pushing them along. I know, he said. Imagine you're in Venice, Italy. I'm your handsome gondolier. This is a gondola boat. Gondola. And this is a gondolier. And in Italy, especially in Venice, Italy, where they have the streets are like canals, water canals, they would ride couples around in the boats and the couples would have a romantic evening while the gondolier might sing a song or just push them along through the water. Amelia Bedelia's mother looked at her then rolled her eyes. Amelia Bedelia's father tied a handkerchief around his neck. Romantical, no, he asked. No, said her mother. Um, maybe embarrassing, said Amelia Bedelia. This will help, he said, clearing his throat and singing, me, 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 me. Then with the fakest Italian accent ever, he launched into, oh, sole mio, which just happened to be one of Amelia Bedelia's favorite songs. But with new lyrics, he made up on the spot. Oh, solo mio, please serve me pasta with extra sauce and a ton of cheese. Then bring me a plate of 
pastries with an espresso as strong as me. Bravo, honey, said Amelia Bedelia's mother, laughing. Amelia Bedelia and her mother clapped loudly, hoping he would stop. But it only encouraged him. Amelia Bedelia's father began singing every Italian word he know, knew, making up a song that made no sense. Buongiorno, gelato, arrivederci, lasagna. With a giant shove, he pushed their boat around the bend and sang, Ciao, minestrone. Hey, be quiet, a voice hollered. You're scaring the fish. The voice belonged to a girl sitting in a boat fishing. Hi, Audrey, Amelia bellered back. How'd you know my name? asked Audrey. As they drew nearer, they explained who they were. Audrey blushed. Sorry I criticized your singing, she said. All I can think about is catching a big fish. I want to win the Lake Largemouth fishing contest. I've never even been fishing, said Amelia Bedelia. I'll show you how, said Audrey. Can I hang out with Audrey, asked Amelia Bedelia. She could teach me how to fish. Well, maybe for a bit, said Amelia Bedelia's mother. If you can spare some gas, we'll head back, said Amelia Bedelia's father. Sure, said Audrey. Come on over, Amelia Bedelia. Amelia Bedelia's father used the boat hook to pull their boat right next to Audrey's. Amelia Bedelia stood up and started to step across. Just then, a gust of wind blew the boats apart. Amelia Bedelia had one foot on each boat. She was doing a giant split as the boats drifted farther and farther away from each other. Whoa, cried Amelia Bedelia, waving her arms around to keep her balance. But it was no use. Splash. Amelia Bedelia bobbed to the surface. She grabbed the side of Audrey's boat, and Audrey hauled her in like a big fish. Amelia Bedelia, yelled her father. Sweetie, yelled her mother. Her parents were frantic until they heard her laughing and sputtering. Then Amelia Bedelia did what her dog finally did when she got wet. She shook herself all over, spraying Audrey with water. Now both girls were laughing, and so were Amelia Bedelia's parents. Don't worry, said Amelia Bedelia. The sun is drying me off. We'll be fine, said Audrey. Tell Grandpa Doc to light the grill. We'll be back in an hour with a mess of fish for dinner.